it's so weird because if I actually did that, people would find it so strange, right? If I mean, say, hey, how you doing? Oh, can you tell me a joke? I'm like, all right, and like a mic falls from the sky. And I'm like, well, there's three guys walking at a bar, right? People call the radio stations to hear music in 2017. My favorite, though, with radio stations is people who are dating. <laughs> or married, or whatever. They call the radio stations to get marriage advice. From an RJ! <laughs> I think I was always the funny one growing up, but I never realized that could be a career option. So when I started working and when I was doing engineering in school, it's a very dry profession, right? You're bored, you don't really have many friends. And then uh, I discovered, you know, I was always a troublemaker and getting myself out of situations with humor, whether it's at work or with family, if I'm messing around or whatever. So I think, you know, for me, once I realized that we could do that as a profession, then I started really working on being funny on the regular. So I think when I saw Russell Peters clip in 2005 or so, I was like, wow, brown people can do stuff outside of medicine and, and, and you know, uh, engineering and stuff. So I just started trying it and that was that. Yeah. Oh, my Microsoft Excel? <laughs> okay, Excel makes sense. Just say that next time, that's fine, right? So it's interesting, like with comedy, it's a lot about what you're going through as a person and then also like what people your age are going through and then what society is going through. So when I started doing comedy, like everything up until that point was about being single. And then the second I started doing comedy, in fact, around this area in the Nugger, I'd got a girlfriend for four years. So then like I was like, oh, there's a whole new ball of material here. <laughs> and like I don't know what to do with it because I didn't know people fight. Like I thought it's all lovey-dovey and stuff. You know, it's just as you grow up, you start to observe things. And earlier it was about, you know, like I think one of my first jokes here mm -hmm. is in India, women don't want to dance with the men, they want to dance with the speakers. <laughs> like, and I would play on that because I was just observing how they were are at places like yeah, the humming yeah. tree. Yeah. Uh, and then I got more mature about things and like, you know, how my mom might meet somebody or, you know, things that are happening at work or, you know, there's a 40 year old guy at my office who didn't know how to tie a tie. And he ran up to me crying like, mommy always does it, you do it for me. So I just like, as you grow up, your comedy matures and kind of grows up as well. Like, I'm not going to talk about being in a boy's hostel and, like, trying to trade CD-ROMs and stuff, you know, that, like, I'm not 15 anymore. Yes, yeah. But, I'm, you know, I'm also not going to talk about mm -hmm. Donald Trump's, like, super politics, you know, because that doesn't interest me as much as what I'm going through. Yeah. Okay, and where are you from? Uh, You're from QP. <laughs> <laughs> Some jokes just write themselves, Rose. <laughs> I think in this country, especially because comedy is just six, seven years old, you know, if a comedian is trying to make a very eloquent point, I mean, you can definitely joke about everything. So things like abuse, poverty, rape, women, like women's rights, if you have a good take on it, it's fair game. But if you're just doing it for shock value, you're going to piss people off and you're going to have no, no taste. Because I'll be swiping, right? Like, oh, Pooja, oh, Divya, oh, Priyanka, and all of a sudden, oh, Samir. <laughs> Like, what? How did Samir get here? <laughs> Samir? And then I check my preferences. No, I'm still straight. I'm still a straight heterosexual man. But I feel like Tinder's like, yeah, Sanjay, we know. When you first start, you think every day I'm gonna come to Humming Tree and I'm gonna, I'm gonna have my coffee here and my notepad here. And I'm gonna start writing, like, eat, pray, love, three hours a day and I'm gonna be awesome. And then you get the pen and the paper, it's all Instagram pretty, like with this table or whatever. And you're like, hmm, shoes. What's funny about shoes? Hmm, shoot, and like nothing comes to your head. Yeah. You try to brainstorm, right? Mm -hmm. But then other times, things just sort of happen. During demonetization, you know, I was like, hmm, what's it, like, I wonder if you can go on cheaper dates now because like no one's gonna complain like that you're trying to save money. So there's a Shanti Sagar by my house, right? So, you know, I was saying, I'll take a girl there. And she was like, mm, I'm a bit fancier. You need to take me to a fancier place. And then I was like, well, there's a new Shanti Sagar across the street. And so that just kind of clicked as I was walking by it, getting breakfast and reading an article about demonetization. So it just sort of, you never, it just, whenever it strikes like lightning, you just figure it out. Digital marketing. What do you really do? Facebook. <laughs> I'm on Facebook. What do you do? Who are your clients right now? Most of them, you. God damn it. All right. 
U.S. space. Do all you guys work for the same, like, person? Oh. <laughs>